We continue our journey down into the dark basement of the English football pyramid with the Northern Premier League Premier Division stadiums. Starting off with Hurst Cross, Ashton United. A lot of the grounds in England are named after the road that they're situated on, but this is named after something that's situated on the road that it's situated on, Hurst Cross which marks the site of the death of the first Hearst, which led to the creation of the first Hearst Hearst. Ah, oh, wait a minute, that's called a Hearst, isn't it? Well, let's just ruin that. Older Street, Atherton Collieries. To be honest, I had to look up what a colliery is. I assumed it was where border collies were made, but it's basically another name for a coal mine. Just like the coal industry, this ground has seen better days. There's just the one proper stand and that is quite small. I do however quite like the black and white stripes throughout, which match the club's kit. Iron Gate, Bamber Bridge. To be honest, I had to look up what a bridge is. I assumed it was where border collies were made, but it's basically a structure that enables people to cross some sort of obstacle. The ground is dominated by this fairly new main stand on one side and over on the other side there are just some houses that must have a nice view of the ground. Greenwich Avenue Not to be confused with Greenwich Avenue, a chain of vegan sandwich restaurants. It's home to Basford United. This one has very little in the way of seating. I don't think there are actually any seats but at least it looks like it's in good condition. Particularly the pitch, which is so pristine you could have sworn that it was made in a factory. Horsefall Stadium, Bradford. Ah oh, yes, Bradford were relegated last season, so I talked about this ground a few months ago in the National League North video. Despite the track, it's not a bad little stadium. As I mentioned in that video, I like how it's carved into the sloping landscape in a satisfying manner. The colour scheme's not bad either. Broadhurst Park, FC United of Manchester. These guys are the Audi version of Manchester United. But rather than profit, the reason for their existence has more to do with morals, I believe. They were actually founded by Man U supporters in 2005 after the Glazers took over. As for the ground, well, it's one of the newest and most impressive stadiums in the league. The exterior is very distinctive, as is the interior, which has all the amenities you'd expect from a fully professional club. Another aspect I appreciate is that unlike a lot of the newer non-league grounds, they've opted for real grass. The North Home, Gainsborough Trinity. Like a lot of the older football grounds in England, this one was started out as a cricket ground, but Gainsborough Trinity were having none of that, and over time the cricketers were forced to retreat into the mountains. There still exists a guerrilla movement to this day, and the cricketers occasionally descend from the mountains to mount attacks on Gainsborough Trinity, using hit and run tactics as cricketers know how. Peace talks have failed time and time again, Oh, uh, nice ground. Nethermore Park, Geisley. As you can see there on the seats, the club is nicknamed the Lions. It would have been perfect if the club that played at Nethermore Park were called the Ravens. You know, because of that famous Edgar Allan Poe painting. As for the ground itself, well, I do appreciate the attention to detail regarding the colour scheme. Small things like having a boundary fence in club colours makes a big difference. Ewan Fields, Hyde United. In case you were wondering, this ground did used to have red seats matching Hyde United's kit, but Manchester City's reserves started playing here for a few years, and before they arrived they had them changed to sky blue. Some grounds have floodlight pylons, some have floodlights mounted to the roof, over on this stand, they've sort of combined the two. Very interesting. New Manor Ground, Ilkeston Town. 
This has got to be one of the more remarkable non-league grounds going around. Well, this stand in particular. I mean, how many other stands have their own little clock tower attached to them? Beautiful. I suppose if your ground has the word manor in its title, there has to be a certain sense of grandeur to it. The rest of the ground is decent, but there is a distinct lack of clock tower. Giant Axe, Lancaster City. I remember the early days when they were still playing at Hatchet. They've come a long way. No, but in all seriousness, I do like how the UK has all these absurd names for stuff. Australia is the opposite when it comes to naming things. For example, I always thought the Melbourne Cricket Ground should have been called Goblin's Walking Stick. But no, go for the boring option. This is actually a nice little ground sitting just below the nice little castle. Lancaster Castle to be specific. Moss Rose, Macclesfield. Despite being one of the older grounds in the league, the amenities are pretty modern. Yeah, there is a significant amount of uncovered terracing, but the largest stand, the Moss Lane stand, is a fairly new covered all seater. And the smaller stand over on the other side, ironically called the main stand, has recently been modernized. It's looking good. Rosette Park, Marine. In case you were wondering, no, it's not like how college football has the Navy and the Air Force academies competing. These guys have nothing to do with the military. The club is actually named after a hotel, oddly enough. Come to think of it, it's a pretty similar story to how FC Best Western got started up. I do like the hits of aqua around the stadium that are in keeping with a maritime related name, even if it is just named after a hotel. Speaking of maritime related, we head to a town called Mask by the Sea. Mount Pleasant, Mask United. Fittingly, some of the buildings around the ground do have a bit of a beach shack vibe to them. In a good way, I suppose. There are also some newer additions here and there. Like this one, which I believe is called the United We Stand. Oh wait, that's probably just the club motto. Causeway Lane, Matlock Town. The ground is quite literally attached to a cricket ground, proving that the two sports can get along. It is a beautiful little ground with some nice stonework about the place, but the best aspect could be Ryber Castle up there on the hill that spectators get a great view of. Actually, since this is the Northern Premier League, I should be saying Ryber Castle. It's actually not that old as far as castles are concerned. It was built by some rich guy in the mid 1800s as his private home. Craig Park, or is that Crack Park? Morpeth Town. This ground is tucked away amongst so many trees that you'd hardly know there's a stadium here from the roadside. Inside, it's like a sanctuary of football. Very tranquil. <laughs> Stainton Park, Radcliffe. I think Stoke City should probably forfeit their nickname and give it to Radcliffe. No one deserves to be called the Potters more than they do. Other than Hogsmeade United, of course, but many people don't consider them a real club on the basis that they don't exist. Anyway, I'm talking about Harry Potter because there's not too much to say about this ground. It's decent, but nothing really stands out. Marston Road, Stafford Rangers. I had already done this bit, but there was some outdated and irrelevant information, so just gonna wing it. Just gonna talk about it. Another stuff about it. It's got there's a shed. It's got the shed end, and oh yeah, it's the southernmost stadium. That's good. Horsey Lane. Warrington Rylands 1906. This is another one of those grounds where just as many people are watching from their houses as from the ground itself. 
There's basically no seating and on a rainy day, spectators have to huddle together under the few sheltered sections. At least you know that there are no glory hunters amongst your supporters. Turnbull Ground, Whippy. I'm rather disappointed that these guys haven't named their ground after the road that it's on. Upgang Lane has a certain ring to it. However, the club does have a bit of a history of violence. Not gang violence, but it was involved in one of the first football riots. That was in Scarborough though, not here. Anyway, it might be a simple ground, but this elevated all-seater man stand is not too bad. Puts those spectators right on top of the action. Borough Park, Workington. This is in the county of Cumbria, which a lot of people say has the gloomiest, most depressing weather in England. And that could be true, but at least this stadium isn't dull. It has a big red building, and some more red stuff. But yeah, in actuality, there is still a lot of bare concrete on show. I believe they had plans to build a new stadium, but they didn't come to fruition. Sandy Lane, Worksop Town. This club claims to trace its origins back to 1861, basically when Rybar Castle was built, which would make it one of the oldest clubs in the country. However, I don't believe there is any hard evidence to support that. Their ground is rather nice though. This building in particular, which is home to the Players' Lounge, is quite interesting. It is of a half brick, half timber construction. So there you have it. As always, I'll pick a favourite. It's got to be Broadhurst. This ground wouldn't look out of place in League 2. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching. Have a good one.